Welcome to the I Create Daily Podcast. I'm Leora Alderson. And I'm Devani Alderson. We're your co-hosts on this journey of creativity and productivity. I Create Daily is for artists in every genre of creating, from musicians to writers, crafters to inventors, bloggers to entrepreneurs. I Create Daily is a movement for creators serious about your art. If you're into creating anything, this podcast is definitely for you. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Hello and welcome to another I Create Daily podcast episode. I'm Devani. I'm Leora. And today we're doing... Were you going to say something? No, go ahead. Okay. And today (laughs) we're doing a coffee break episode on a topic that we're both very passionate about and is a hot topic and we're just going to share some of our opinions about it because on the coffee breaks we talk about ideas that we've been thinking about a lot and talking about a lot and this is a big topic so ideas that we think also um, will help folks out there so we'll help you um and we'll help many creatives um hopefully you and it could be controversial this particular topic and we're not doing this as a lead-in um because it can be a sensitive subject so and it's something that people actually do struggle with and um there's a lot of societal pressures and norms and we're just going to share some of our opinions about yeah them. and by now i mean you already know what it is because <laughs> i'm sure we will title the episode something to do with the title of the topic and that is reasons not to go to college so um, you probably already had a visceral reaction to that you might have and here's the thing it's where are we are not saying not to be educated and not to pursue education and learning Anyone who follows our I Create Daily website, articles, and podcasts know that we are passionate, lifelong learners. Um, I you know, plan to live to over 100 and be learning up until the day I die, hopefully. Um, but we are passionate about like learning. But you were going to say, like, hopefully after that, too. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, that would be interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> That is my plan too. Uh, but, but so what we're passionate about is getting the education you need for what it is you want most to do. Yeah. Uh, so, so often we hear people say, I mean, this is the tradition. And remember, or we're not remember, it's like, oh, this is a new idea for now. And that is that we, but everybody knows that we're in transition times, you know, time, everything, every system in our society today is in turmoil, is shaky, is not, is kind of outdated and, you know, conflict, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of conflict in the world, uh, which is why we're so big on creating positive um, safe spaces, essentially, like I Create Daily Group and I Create Daily Web, um, Facebook page. Not like safe space as in like, um, we're going to pander to your every single emotion, safe space, like let your creativity and productivity flourish in a place where people support that. Well, support positivity because um, we firmly believe that kindness and positivity uh, is a tremendous solution to majority of the problems of our times. Yeah. Um, and that is, it doesn't matter all the turmoil and what's going on and the conflict out there, let's not contribute to it because artists and creators and creators, you know, basically creativity is our human right and ability to connect in a way with our own divinity because mm-hmm. it is the creative well within us. And so that's what we're here to nurture. And so it is to consider the possibilities for creators. We have heard um, like artists, for instance, say they're gonna go back to school to get an art degree so they can do art. Same thing with writers and what have you. And yet the best way to become an artist, to become a painter is to paint. The best way to become a writer is to write while also honing your skills and improving them through study through coaching, through learning, through education. And even through helping other people because a lot of times we learn a lot from explaining something to other people. So, you know, sharing your techniques, sharing your interests with others, explaining it. And in the, in the sharing of that, you naturally start learning or you start explaining something in a certain way and you're like, wait a second does that really make sense? Or maybe I don't have to do it this way myself. Maybe there's a better way to do it. And uh, it's not about not learning. Like you were saying, it's not like don't go to college and be like a dropout that does nothing or any of that at all. It's like figure out what you want to learn 
and learn that without somebody else's preconceived structure of what they think you need to know. Because a lot of us, we want to create our work. We don't necessarily need a super uber structured system to tell us, and you need to take these classes and you have to do it for this many years and it'll cost this much and you'll be in ridiculous amounts of debt. No, you just want to make your thing. And in the doing of making that thing, you naturally learn, you naturally connect with mentors, you naturally connect with students, you naturally connect with patrons uh, who support that vision. Yeah, and so for instance, um, Colleen Nichols is one of the members in the I Create Daily for Creators Facebook group. She's prolifically self-taught. <laughs> She's a prolific artist, creator. She creates jewelry. She can paint. She can draw. She can use, uh, clay. It, use clay and polymers. She's just, and she's a gardener, multi-talented um, and creator. And she's also teaching her daughters this and doing some of it with her daughters. And daughter and son. Thank you, daughter and son. Sorry about that, Colleen. And when it is that she wants to know how to do something, then she just goes and finds a YouTube video. Yeah observes it, studies it, and tries it, you know? And, and we're in this amazing um, era, like a technological slash creative slash arts renaissance, where we're all sharing our knowledge. Like that's yes. literally what this podcast yes. is, is we're sharing our knowledge. We're bringing people on who are knowledgeable to share their knowledge. And we're asking our community about what they know and their wisdom. Yes. And so it's like, it's, it's kind of getting back to a, how we used to operate of like the tribe contributing to the tribe, yes. just naturally, yes. not because they're forced, not because a system is forcing them, yeah. hey, you have to share this because you must, you know, yeah. but it's just the, the tribe wisdom that's just coming together and being like, hey, here's a really cool idea that I discovered when I made this thing and maybe it will help you. Yeah, no, that's an excellent point about the tribe and the sharing of the wisdom, because one of the things that with the industrial era and the, the institutionalization of education um, you know, whenever you try and make it all equal for everybody, then it's never really great for anyone. It reminds me of a <laughs> so true. It reminds me of a funny uh, analogy, and that is like a sofa sweeper. And you know, sofa sweepers are convenient and they can serve a purpose, <laughs> but they're rarely, especially, they're rarely really comfortable for sitting or sleeping. They're it's just, like they're, they suck at being a bed and a couch, <laughs> but they're both right. sort of right. like in a in a pinch. You know, they're better than nothing, right? Yeah. Absolutely better than nothing. But today, especially when the opportunities are more than they've ever been in mankind and humankind that we know of, mm -hmm. noble, noble history, confirmed history, um, then to do and be and pursue the career of your dreams, the, the, your passion work, doing work in the world that's along the lines of things you love. So for instance, if you wanted to be um, you know, a, a sculptor, then you wouldn't need to also you know, take higher math necessarily. You wouldn't, you wouldn't need to uh, take science classes. You wouldn't need to, whatever the specifics are, that as so many people say, by the time they get their degree in college, so many people say, I've heard far more people than not, say that they never use their degree again, that they never even use many of the classes they took. So as we were talking about- And they might have learned a lot from those classes, but it's just sort of like, is what you, it's also sort of like information overload too. Yeah. It's like, is what you, learning is nice, but if you don't do anything with it, it's just your, it's like a sock drawer that's too full. Right. So well, well, totally random. But so, <laughs> so like you were talking earlier about, wouldn't it be cool? And at some point you would be interested in doing learning digital art yeah. because that's one way you can be precise, you know, with the help of the digital, mm -hmm. you know, um, tools and yeah. such. And yet you, so, so if you wanted to become a digital artist, then you wouldn't also need to go through four years and all those other courses, mm -hmm. you know, you spent, which is why actually technical colleges, community colleges are doing well in terms of specific yeah, kinds of in. class enrollment, going, people going back to school to learn just that trade, thing that they need. Trade, trade schools. Yes. And, and like, whether it's tech, technical trades or mechanical or engineer or like just honing in on this is exactly what I want to learn because this is the career I want. And it's not even about like, everybody has to be an entrepreneur or everybody has to make it because that's not, we interviewed Nancy and she was just saying like, as an engineer, as a scientist, as somebody with that background, she likes the practicality of a safety net and right. having a job. And right. that makes sense. Nancy like Bryan's. not everybody wants to be the pioneer and the entrepreneur, right. but that also doesn't mean 
nobody likes wasting their time either or their right. money or their resources. Right. And so there's so many better opportunities and ways to learn what you what you want to learn. Yes. And so consider what it is you love to do. And so, so let's say that um, you want to be a songwriter. Um, and then one of the things that you could do is look at courses like through Creative Live, um, through, uh, and tutorials online that follow the people that you admire, study yourself, what they do and how they do it. And then also just start writing songs and putting it out there, putting snippets of them if you're not comfortable putting the whole thing out there online. But when you do put it out there and copyright it, it is, it does belong to you. And far, you know, like think of the, the and we will link to the articles that we've written of this already of the people who are well known today, who started simply by publishing their stuff online for free. Mm -hmm. And in the end got found or else built their audiences so large that they became their own business. Yeah. Um, so so there's so many opportunities because there's so many opportunities consider what it is you would love to do and then just start down that path of what comes up like what you think you need to learn about it and start there like i want to do watercolor i want to uh, paint on mugs or whatever it may be i want to write novels i want to be a blogger i want to make money from my website mm -hmm. blogging telling my story i want to share my skills my passion for uh higher education I'm an educator and I want to share um, the lessons I've learned in the classroom with parents, especially mm -hmm. children or whatever it may be. There's so many, there's, if you have that skill or knowledge or are interested in it, there's somebody out there who needs what you have. Exactly. I'm going to throw a little wrench because we've established and play like devil's advocate because it's fun. And just so that people know that we do think about like the entire argument of what we're talking about. We're not just like, here's our opinion and that's that. But um, there's the famous story, perhaps you've heard, it. I know we've talked about it a lot. Um, Steve Jobs, like the reason Mac and Apple are around is because of basic idea of Steve Jobs having doing a calligraphy course in an area of interest that he didn't necessarily know, like calligraphy and computers, what does that have to do with each other? But then he's like, oh my God, what if we had all these different fonts instead of like the same five or six on the computer? What if we have, and it was because he took a course in calligraphy. So the question there for people who are like, well, I don't have a, I don't have a purpose. I don't have a passion. I don't know what I love. There could be a million things I love. I, I know I don't want to have a job or a career. I know college is probably not right for me, but I don't know what else to do. Then how, where do they go? When it's somebody who doesn't have a clear direction at all, they just have the nagging sense that they want to explore. Things. Yeah. So then you just start. So you, if you're, are you saying that they don't even know what they're interested in? Not necessarily not know what they're interested in, but just sort of like, um, there's a lot of things like some, you could take a class in something and then it sparks an idea. Sort of like the organic process of life where you, you're doing something and then this random idea out of doing that thing happens. So like Steve Jobs took a calligraphy course and in that course is where the idea was born that, hey, I want to create a, a program that allows us to have different fonts. And, and then that snowballed. Um, so it's sort of just like, people who are unsure of where to go because of the oppor the amount of opportunities, where should they start? Yeah, so. If that makes sense. Yeah, it just, if we don't, and that's a good point that we don't have to have it all figured out. Yeah. And you don't, so you don't have to know, but, but go with what you're most interested in and think about what it is you need to know about it that you don't already know that you would like to know and then find that out. Yeah. And, you know, like, one of the things you don't want to do is wait to begin to do anything. Yeah. So if you, but we've used this many times before, you know, and as Jeff Goins said, who we, who we interviewed about writing and he's a writer and um, so an awesome. author, writer, speaker, coach. Um, and that is if you, if you want to write, if you want to be a writer, then you write. Yeah. And so you just start in the direction. I mean, that's like, in, you were talking about the tribe of the past. Mm -hmm. So imagine like if you wanted to be a blacksmith, then you would go and intern with yeah. a blacksmith. You wouldn't go and intern with the farmer. Um, right. necessarily you wouldn't go and intern with the shopkeep person you would go and intern with the the blacksmith and learn how to work with metal and and that sort of thing so and learn how to be the smithy and and so same thing that's the thing it's like what is it you're interested in doing you know there are like some of the reasons we have an article about it where i think i started out saying that which we'll link to but some of the reasons not to go to college is all the money that you'll spend and all the time that you'll take so imagine this 
And we talked about this on our interview with um, um, Fabienne mm -hmm. Raphael, which will air, I think, after this, and we'll link the two when it's live. But um, so you can go to a four-year college to get a degree. You come out with no guarantees. You have spent, you know, the average college debt right now is about $37,000 by the time of graduation, and yet it ranges from 24 to 200,000 and more. Um, and we'll have some of the statistics in the article that we linked to. And at the end of the four years, there's no guarantee that you'll have a job and you will have spent a tremendous amount of those four years doing something other than exactly what it is you want to end up doing. So conversely, if it is you're not sure, but let's say that you're interested in uh, being a fiction writer, well, there are those master courses online yeah. by fiction writers. Uh, it would be a matter of writing and then I, and having hiring a writing coach perhaps, or even just a one-time uh, editor to, depending on what your the kind of what the nature of your writing, what kind of writing you want to do, we determine what kind of um, training and coaching and teaching you would be seeking. And same for art. Like we've interviewed Carla Sondheim, who's an art teacher, and she yes. has courses for people who want to learn art, whether you're already an established artist and want to try something new or you're brand new and you just want to, you know, learn. And there's so many people online who are creators like you who've already taken the leap yeah. to be a professional creator. And that is so much more valuable because you're learning their mistakes, their pitfalls, the things to look out for, the complete picture of what you should be aware of or what you need to look out for for your own creative career or whatever you're going to do because that experience is not a pre-created environment. It's real life. It's like these were our struggles. It took us this long to monetize because we had these different issues and that's what we had to address in our business um and so yeah yeah so, <laughs> so when you were talking i was reminded i wish i i don't remember the name right offhand but i'll look for it so, so let's say that there are some there's someone in our community who is um we'll say a, a lapidarist or uh, makes jewelry um, or make some kind of handcrafted thing. And let's say that they go to um, arts and Nancy, festivals. Nancy Gardner, I think? No, well, no, I, that's not who I was thinking about in the oh, moment, okay. but, that's a, but, but, that, but yes, she does that also. So let's say that, um, that you, you have, that you're already making things and you go to arts and crafts or our, um, craftsman shows and you display and you know that of the things that you're making that there's a really popular item that's easy to make and i mean as in relatively easy time wise that you mm -hmm. can make a lot of it. it's always really popular then for you it might be a matter of learning how to uh, become an amazon seller or mm -hmm. an etsy seller yeah. and how to do a better job not only of listing your item on etsy but then how to sell on etsy like what are the top sellers on etsy colleen, do? colleen nichols you were talking about her earlier how she's multi Passionate, and we uh, mentioned her, um, we mentioned to her that she should consider putting her work on Etsy as a way to sell it, and she did it, and within a couple days, she had her store up and was selling items. Yes, exactly. You know, like, and sure, there's so many different excuses of why it might not work for you, but you don't focus on that. You right. know, you don't get into it thinking, oh, well, I might fail and not sell things. I mean, of course there's learning curves for all of us right. and, and you just try it. And another thing too is if you want to turn your art and your creative passion and your book writing into a business, then don't just listen to other artists, listen to other business people yes. because they will have ideas. Sure, they're not selling creative work. Sure, they're in a totally different arena. That does not mean that yeah. they don't have practical advice for, because artists aren't historically great at being the salesperson for their brand. So you just, you learn and you absorb and you can do it through a so many different means now than than yeah. just college and we have so for the fiction writers for instance out there and we have a number in our audience and in our family and it's um it's a group that we're passionate about helping as well as artists because we really want these creatives to be able to thrive doing what they love to do and yet it is so hard today you know when you write, you could spend six months to a year or more writing a fiction book that may sell for $15 on Amazon and you may be getting approximately 50% of that 
And, mm-hmm. and yet it, it, it might sell, you know, five a month or five a day even is not enough to make a living. So how can you? And the thing that we see over and over again is that the creatives who put out a lot of work, a lot of content and continue learning and continue making the connections. Again, like we spoke about with Fabienne Raphael Mm -hmm. in our interview with her, she's a coach, um, a business coach that helps people basically package their expertise and bring it to the world. um, And as a coach and as a, like a, a profiting business kind of thing. So, so there are ways to do it. Is it easy? No, it isn't. Does it take, but it, and it takes time. But again, at the end of four years, and most people are like, accept that they might need to put four years into college to get a, you know, a bachelor's degree. And then they, and, and if they won't come out with any guarantee of work and they won't have the experience, imagine if you spend four years, no matter your age, and we have many people who are also in our audience who are nearing the end of their first career or their made the last, the career that they've been in most recently and looking toward retirement where that now they're free to pursue work they love. Um, and that's what lights people on fire, you know, where it's not work because you're loving all that you're doing. You may not think you love, you know, learning the business side of it, but at the same time, when it is that it helps you do more with your work, yeah. do more with your creativity by getting it out into the world, then it's absolutely worth it. And if what you need to learn is learning how to bring a partner onto your business so that, you know, they're handling the things that you just, you refuse to do, then that's also a thing to learn. Like what, what steps do I need to take to attract a partner who is savvy about the things that I am just not good at or good with. So, you know, there's different avenues and I love what Tom Bilyeu says of impact theory. And he says, the struggle is guaranteed. The success is not. So whether you go to college, whether you take courses, uh, go to live events, pursue your own business and do your own, go your own route. Every single one of those options is a struggle and you have to pick the one that you enjoy the most and the one that at the end of, of that time, you're going to look back on and think, even if I failed, I'm really, really glad that I gave that my all. Yeah. And there are, so an example, there are artists and photographers who um, publish their work for free on sources like Pixabay and Unsplash, which we use for small young startups, businesses like ours. It's tremendous benefit to be able to publish articles with wonderful images and even products with wonderful images uh, that you can actually access for free. Mm -hmm. We like to give tribute to those artists, of course, and our dream is when we are able to pay um, and buy and commission the work for everything we create from the artists within our community. Um, And so that's how it works. We already have a list of people that we will go to when it is that we're able to commission work from the various artists. And that's one of the ways. So it's like, here's the thing. If you're an artist and you can't but create, then just keep creating, publish it in various places Mm -hmm. online where it's protected, where you have your name, where you have your watermark, whatever, if it, as well as, I mean, there are certainly platforms where you can get paid. So here's what some of the artists and photographers are doing. They publish their work, what they consider to be their good, but not, perfect work or not their best work on the free platforms. And then you go and you see that uh, and then the ads show up where you can go and buy the better versions of that on the paid services. And that's one of the ways essentially they market their business because every business person knows that a tremendous amount of their profits get turned back into their business and in particular through advertising and marketing in order to get out there. So for photographers, Pixabay and unsplash and shutterstock shutterstock is for for like earning money people because people pay for the shutterstock service and then you get a percent of the images of yours that they they download and then pixabay and unsplash are posting the free photos like you mentioned something else that's really important for painters or non-digital artists are um and i've noticed this trend on instagram if you're a visual artist go on instagram and see what other visual artists are doing like i cannot emphasize that enough instagram you don't spend hours maybe set a timer because it's it's a it's a wormhole but something i noticed that a lot of really good painters do is they position their artwork they get photos from pixabay or unsplash of like where they want their art displayed and they put their painting on that photo. YouTube videos of how to do it, uh, but so it putting really, it in context, putting it, putting like on their a wall painting, of a living right, room, kind right. Of thing. Instead of hey, here's my sunset 
painting that I made, or hey, here's this great big tree that I painted, whatever it is. Here's the galaxy. They take that painting that they've done, the photo of it, they put it in a contextual environment, and it helps people see if I bought this painting, this is the type of room I could put it. It helps their customer, their buyer, imagine how to buy their painting. And so it, you're literally teaching your customer this is the type of room it's good for. This is how it looks on a wall. This is the type of wall it looks good on. This is the type of furniture it could go with. You know, Bruno, Bruna Mebs, who we interviewed, who does ink art, mm -hmm. and she's multiple types of art, but she especially um, does ink art, and she does such a good job with that. She really um, shares her design perspective of where her art looks good. And because of that, she has a great business, and the type of customers that buy her work really know before they buy it this is how it looks good for me. And I want that because I want an environment that looks like that. Right. And so I think that's also really important for like non-photographers, how you can position your work so that people can get that experience, right. which is totally off point of college. But I think the point no, is that you're teaching yourself through just experience and learning and getting out there and all the different platforms that provide real life examples. Right. And so an example of that is, um, we mentioned earlier is interning with somebody mm -hmm. um, and it's sort of like like one of the things that <coughs> sorry <you're> okay <laughs> sorry it's okay you want your pause okay, okay you sure yeah okay <laughs> don't get it all choked up <laughs> I was just getting ready to use you as an example and I didn't okay. yeah, no no I was going to talk about how um, as a part of your homeschooling you were learning to um, offer social media services and we've talked about that yeah. before in a previous um, podcast and you were first you did it for free and then you did it for paying clients so you were uh, learning while earning and so that's the point too there are so many job opportunities so back to your original question about what if someone's not sure about which direction they're going mm -hmm. or what they want to do next then start working with people whose work you admire yeah. or whose genre or who's you know like the category or something see if there's some work you can do for them and at the very least you can follow them and watch and observe and join their groups and pay attention to what they're doing but there's another way uh, creatives can you can uh, apply to be a freelancer on a number of different platforms mm -hmm. such as uh, free up it's free with three e's mm -hmm. upfreeup.com and we'll link to that mm -hmm. in our uh, show notes upwork. Uh, upwork is another one and so you can go and put your application to uh, be a freelancer in the areas that you're interested in working in um, it's recommended in the beginning if you're new and getting started and don't yet have any reviews that you start out at a lower rate and then you can gradually increase your rate as you increase your reviews and your mm -hmm. ranking and again while in the beginning you might be working for a much lower rate it's still better than paying to go to college and not earning because now you're going to the school of life and you're paying your dues by being a lower rate but then <laughs> people are paying you yes. because you still know something yeah they're paying you to learn <laughs> and so you know like if you were an intern uh, for an artist it could be that uh, there's an artist in your area who is well known who's monetizing through their art and you could do things like offer to help them um, hang their paintings when they go for a show or an exhibit um, you could offer to be a personal assist assistant to them um, and then you know the grunt work behind the actual thing and then yeah. you get to really get a sense of here's the glamorous title of being an artist, but then here's the actual day-to-day -day work yeah. required to yeah. be an artist that, yeah. that makes a living. Yeah, and you would do that if you, let's say, didn't have the revenue to, or didn't have the, the actual finances <laughs> to you know, hire a coach or pay for a course. And again, Creative Live is a great place to go for artists and creators courses. But you could literally right now um, go and take a Photoshop course, and in a week's time, you could probably be creating documents for or PDFs or brochures or something for you know maybe in a couple of weeks um, for clients as yeah. a freelancer. You know, with just a couple of weeks worth or a month. Of, of training um, as well as creating your own things yeah. um, this reminds me of uh, so just doing what you love to do so one of the people in our one of the members and I create daily for creative <coughs> Facebook group uh, Cindy Tripp Wentworth um, participated in the I Art daily challenge mm -hmm. and so and, and now she's participating in the I, I write daily, daily challenge um, and she's merged the two mm -hmm. in a beautiful way where now she's writing her reflections each day as well as creating a piece of art now what she's doing is creating a body of work in 30 days she will have 30 pages that could easily be put into a journal that she can then package to sell 
Uh, she could create her own Facebook group that leads other people through the prompts, essentially, that oh, yeah. she has created, um, that leads people through creating their own uh, lifestyle uh, reflections journal. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, they could all uh, sell it or she could sell it or she could sell theirs, whatever, through uh, Amazon or Etsy or through some kind of festival or show, uh, friends and family first. So, and if you do, by the way, if you do sign up to be a freelancer, you know, contact people you know uh, who, you, if you don't already do services for them, offer to do services in exchange for a review because then as soon as yes. you start stacking some reviews, you will get more hires. We interviewed Christy Stratus and that's how she started her editing company. She was a project manager and for, a, I think about, I think it was like two or three years before she left her project management job, she started an editing company on the side and she decided because it can be hard if you're doing work for free for people, it can be hard to like then tr transition and make that ask of, okay, now are you, can you pay me for this work? So what she did was I have 20 slots or maybe it was 10, but she had a certain amount of slots to do work for free in exchange for a testimonial. So she edited people's work for free, 10 people's work for free. She got a testimonial. And from there, they also then became like word of mouth, uh, yeah. Word of mouth yeah. advertising yeah. for her and referred her to other people who then paid her to edit their book or edit their work. And so that's a really good way to sort of establish a base. Um, it can help you get over the fear of asking people if you have any fear of just asking like, hey, um, can you hire me or do you want to buy this thing? And so you build up that um, the queue. Yeah, well, a portfolio. Portfolio. Yeah. And and you get those testimonials because testimonials and word of mouth is like yeah. the best. Yeah. So here's another example. And we, you know, we could ideate on these kinds of things all we're day clearly long. clearly passionate so, about this topic. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so we, but we want, but here's another one. And then also if you guys have specific questions of something you're interested in and you couldn't come up with a plan or I didn't have ideas sparked from this conversation then send us an email <clears throat> creators at iCreateDaily.com um, and we'll either send you, we'll send you a reply for sure. Uh, and if we end up using your question for a coffee break, we won't use your name unless you uh, give permission for us to use your name, but we might use an example. Um, but so, so here's, let's say that there, there's someone there's, that you're interested in, in uh, travel, but you don't have the budget to just travel the world or wherever you want to go just on your own. Uh, or perhaps you don't want to do it alone and you want to travel with companions or whatever. Well, we know like Lynn Hunley and our uh, the I Create Daily members, uh, Facebook members, um, has done a number of different travel art courses. So now you're merging your passion for travel and you're merging your passion for art. Well, guess yeah. what? These places and these kind of venues need guides. They need helpers. Um, and so you could even, if you're an artist and you love to travel, uh, and you could teach others, then you might absolutely be able to lead a tour or else be on a, um, what is it? There's some people who like cruises and they're able to become teachers for cruises. I know fit and there are a lot of like traveling fitness people, just like there are traveling nurses, yeah. they're traveling artists who sign on with a cruise to be the onboard artist. And it could be that they're uh, there for the children's recreation because they have different programs for kids. Or it could be that they're there for adults who are seeking to uh, learn how to do art as a part of their you know, op options, uh, their creative options while on board. So there's just so many possibilities. And so for instance, you have you were retiring as a secretary or administrative assistant and you want to explore your creative side, but you haven't done that yet, but you want to travel or you want to, uh, yeah, let's just say you want to travel. Then one of the things you could actually do is potentially connect with a top level um, executive or, or entrepreneur who does a lot of travel needs a VA perhaps on site and you can become a personal assistant. That's smart. Yeah, there's, <laughs> That's smart. You know, there's so many, like Gary Vaynerchuk yeah. is one that he has a, a whole slew of 22 people now yeah. um, working for him, just building his personal brand. And there are several of them that travel with him. Uh, if it is that you want your own website, then one of the things you could do is take a course, a lot of them free online to start on uh, how to write blog for blogs, how to format articles uh, to get traffic for websites, etc. cetera. Um, if you know you want to start a blog, then definitely if you want to start a blog that's going to become a part of your future, then do it with intention that will help you learn how to build it in such a way that it becomes more than a back alley, yeah. you know, uh, kind of closet essentially 
in terms of the market and the retail world. In other words, you want people to find you. You want to, if you want to write and put it out in the world, you want, and you want more than just family and friends to be able to find you, then just learning about that is still, is, is an option. And there's so not, many. Let me, sorry, no, let me sorry. finish that thought. No, I just realized, not only an option for your own blog, but the knowledge and skill of, of how to write articles, how to format them for SEO, another search engine optimization, how to format them for websites uh, in such a way that, you know, the, so many websites need in terms of content writers is definitely a marketable skill as yeah. well. And there's so much online about that. Yes. Like we'll list our favorites, um, uh, Authority Hacker, Neil Patel, um, there's others. Right. But I think the biggest takeaway of this particular coffee break is that we're living in an era where you can find an expert in any random niche that you want to become good at and great at and maybe make a livelihood. Maybe it's a side hustle, whatever it is. And you can just learn your way on the internet pretty much. Yeah. And, and yeah, obviously do your homework, you know, uh, find people who have a track record and, and learn from them and not just the person posing, but it's also pretty easy to spot a fake on the internet. Yeah. I mean, you just have to look and see, do they actually have a track record of doing what they say they do? Yeah. That's not too hard to find on the internet. So yeah. just, and um, don't, and before you put your, like, if you want to do a freelancer thing, you could actually, if you know how to edit, <clears throat> regardless of whether you've had formal editing training, you can put your work, you can put your, you know, your portfolio online, your application, your, um, job, what do you call, what do they call it? Your profile, mm -hmm. your profile on these platforms and say that you can, you're available to write, to edit, to do graphics, whatever it is that you're offering and that you know how to do. And then rather than a degree, what they're looking for are examples of work you've done. Well, I mean, if you so. want to be an editor, write articles on LinkedIn. Like you don't have to have a blog right away. Yeah. You know, you could start with LinkedIn because you can publish articles on LinkedIn yes. and it is already a platform, which is basically like a, a um, it's like a, it's like a live resume where you can constantly update content, but then you can also share your experience and you write articles and people begin to see, Oh, you really know what you're talking about. And I have work that he's editing. Yeah. So, so yeah. And I'm so glad you said that because you could also, and then you could put at the bottom, you know, if you want um, editing or writing work, whatever, contact me. And then you have your email and they can contact you directly and hire you, pay you through PayPal. It doesn't mm -hmm. even have to be through a free freelancer platform. Another example of that is, um, is it James Matichuk? I think in our Facebook group, he does sketches, yeah. he's an artist, he has sketches. So whether it's him or anyone else, let's say that, you do, uh, you're, you're an inker, an ink artist. I love and, that name. Yeah. And you go on to, and you start putting and publishing your work on, on LinkedIn. Well, guess what? You are going to have, there are going to be, there's going to be somebody, some um, corporation, some uh, entrepreneur who would love to commission you to create something specific just oh, yeah. for them. It might be a sketch. You might be, they might be hiring you to create uh, a caricature or a cartoon visual of themselves that can be the art or logo on their site, or they might be to create logos. Yeah. So they're, uh, we're in an era where business and art are melding so nicely because yeah. businesses want to be seen as innovative and creative and on the leading edge. And they might not personally be the artist, but they want to work work with the artist. They want that touch of humanity and art and creativity and that spark that doesn't make their business sterile. Right. You know, they want their business to stand out in a way that's true to their industry, to their business, to their, to the people they want to attract. And so there will just be more opportunities, but you first have to be there and be ready to take those opportunities. And that doesn't happen if you don't take the first step of putting yourself out there because they're not going to contact you if they don't know you. Yeah. So, so and we will link to, again, to the article that should be published by the time this airs on uh, 10 reasons not to go to college. Um, let me just see if there's one statistic that I can share here. Um, 60 to 69 year olds represent the largest increase in student loan debt. So those are uh, boomers, baby boomers, and even some seniors going back to school. And many times, sometimes it's because of an interest in learning, which is fantastic. Sometimes it's because of pinched uh, resources due to uh, you know, uh, inflation 
and limited retirement income. Um, so this is instead of seeing this as, as a problem and you know a limitation, look at it as an opportunity to basically do more, learn more of the things that you also really enjoy. So yeah. I think that's a wrap for now. We went on a wrap. I hope yeah. you guys enjoyed it. Please let us know again, creators at iCreateDaily.com. Yeah. And send us ideas of what you're struggling with, what you, what would inspire you, uh, what you need help with uh, at creators at iCreateDaily.com. You can message us on our Facebook page at iCreateDaily on Facebook and just let us know what you would be interested in hearing because we love doing episodes like this. We love giving you guys ideas that, that you'll act on because it helps you. Yeah. And so the more we hear from you guys, the more we can create these the episodes that serve you the best. Okay. Bye. Right. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us for the I Create Daily podcast. Please let us know what creatives you would like us to interview and what topics you would be interested in hearing more about. And if you enjoyed this show, please leave a review on iTunes. We value your feedback. We read all the reviews and it just helps us get the word out on the I Create Daily podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.